All right, hey there. It's uh, it's been a while since my last video. Um, but today I just wanted to do an updated video on Emulation Station for Windows. Uh, RetroArch just uh, came out with a pretty big update that changed a lot of things. Um, so I needed to make a new update for that. So we're gonna go through the same process as the last video. Um, so we're gonna go to emulationstation.org and then we're gonna download the installer. Um, I've got it downloaded already, so I'm gonna go um, just install it from here. Um, once it's downloaded. And then, yes, and then I agree. And then some people had a, uh, an issue with um, some errors that were coming up. Um, I think it was partly because they unchecked this box. You've got to make sure they're all checked um, so that it'll work. Um, if this isn't checked, it's going to throw a bunch of errors when it tries. So, um, yeah, just make sure they're all checked. And then just next, install, and let it install. And then also, since the last time, I've updated the configuration list to include more emulators. Um, so it's got a lot more um, options, and so I've got a new download a zip file for you guys to download, and we'll do that next as soon as Emulation Station finishes downloading. Um, but while that's downloading, we'll get to that now. So uh, it's, And I've, I'll provide the links in the description below as well, just so you don't have to type it out from the video. Um, so we're going to download the emulation station zip file. Um, and then we'll see, looks like it's still downloading. It may take a bit to download depending on how decent your computer is. Mine's kind of old, so sorry about that. Um, but once it's finished downloading, okay, good, finished. It will create a dot emulation station folder in your home folder. So if you just click up here on your username, um, right here under Emulation Station. So all it's got right now is themes, but what we downloaded from the zip file, we can just right click on it and then 7-zip extract, oh, not, not extract here, um, sorry, extract files. And then we will navigate to that Emulation Station folder, just click on it and then press OK, click OK. OK, so now you've got the folder structure for all of your ROMs. And so these are all the systems that I have configurations for. So there's quite a bit more than last time. Um, and so this is where you're going to put your ROMs. So if you had like, I don't know, Game Boy ROMs, you put them in Game Boy, Game Boy Advance ROMs, Game Boy Color, um, GameCube, Genesis, MAME, etc., etc. Um, Nintendo DS, New Geo Pocket. Um, anyways, there's a lot of them. And I, I'll show you later a wiki page that I have just in case you're confused about which folders mean what. Um, and then systems. So um, I'm going to go through the ES systems config real quick right now just so you understand what it is. Um, so if you don't have Notepad++, you should download it. I'll provide a link for that as well. So click edit with Notepad++. So each system is basically this right here. Um, these are just the names of the system. This is the path to your ROMs. So where we just were, all those ROM folders, this is the path. So if you're confused on that, you can always just check this file as well. Um, and then these are the file extensions of your ROMs. So like .iso, um, amigos, .edf, and etc. Um, and then this is the command path to open up RetroArch and the cores or the emulators. Um, and if you don't like the core that's not work, if the core is not working for you and there's a different one, you can always just change out this backend part here. And I'll show you a little bit about that later too. Um, and then platform and theme usually just reflect the full name. Um, and so an important thing to note, if you've got spaces in your username, um, I do, then sometimes it won't work. So that's why I added two options. So there's one with spaces. Um, so let's say you've got spaces in your name, then you'll want to um, just change this file name to backup if you want to still keep it. Um, and then we'll edit this one with Notepad. Um, yeah. So you see that it's got the username and then it's in quotations. So that way you don't have to worry about the spaces. So all you got to do is just press highlight the username, press control F, and then change it to your username under find and replace. So I'm going to change it to, in my case, Ebfagus. Okay, 
so we'll replace all and then we'll just save and then we're going to want to save as um, es underscore systems dot cfg all right cool and so for some of the stuff like the Wii and the Dolphin, you might have to change the paths for where you download those um, because I don't think they work with spaces regardless of what you do with quotes. At least I could never figure it out. Um, but okay, so now that's done, we've got a configuration set up for emulation station. Um, now we've got to put RetroArch on. Um, so under the systems folder in your emulation station folder, there are, so this is where you install your Dreamcast or your Dolphin emulator. And it's going to be on uh, RetroArch is where we want to install. So it's blank right now, but we'll go to the BuildBot site and download um, the RetroArch we need. So we'll go there. Right. And then it, the latest one is 1.22. So that's one I've downloaded. And again, you got to make sure that you've got the right version for your computer. Windows X64 is 64-bit, uh, and Windows X86 is 32-bit. Newer computers are typically X64. Um, older computers are 32-bit. And if you're not sure, you can always go down in here, right-click on Computer, under Properties, um, and you can see right here under System Type, it's 64-bit operating system. So I'll download this one. And you can see there's not a cause option anymore. Um, these are built in um, as an online updater now. So I'll show you how that works. So you click on that to download it. I've already got it downloaded um, under my downloads folder. So it'll show up like RetroArch dot, again, the seven zip. So you gotta have to seven zip to, to extract this. So we go to seven zip, extract files, and then we're gonna browse back to our emulation station folder under our systems and click on RetroArch and click OK. And then press OK. And then it might take a bit for this to extract, um, but we'll just wait until it extracts and then I'll show you what to do from there. Um, so we'll follow my notes some more. Um, the first thing we're probably going to want to do is change some of the RetroArch configs and uh, actually download the cores that we want. Um, with the newer version, um, instead of coming with cores, it's got an online core updater, so you can choose which cores you want and not the ones you don't want, so it actually saves you space. Um, if you know which cores you want. Um, so while this is extracting, I think I'll show you the wiki pages I've set up on my GitHub. Um, and also, by the way, if you ever ruin your ES systems configs, um, I've got them backed up online on the, my GitHub account. So you can always just copy and paste them from there. Um, I'll show you right now. So um, username, no spaces, that's most people's. Um, you can see right here, you've got everything. You can just click on raw. And then you can click Control A to select them all, and then just copy and paste it into Notepad plus plus and save it. Um, anyways, but so also on this GitHub page, if you click on the little booklet thing on the side, it's a wiki. Um, and so all alongside, it's got configurations for each individual emulator or console, um, and it also has a RetroArch cores page. And so it has a list of the console on the left and the cores or core file names that you might switch out in your ES systems config. Um, it also notes which BIOS you might need. Sorry, it's a little um, a little too big for the page, but um, so it shows you which BIOS they need, and it also shows you which ROM folder you put them in. So that might be a good useful resource um, for new new people who maybe don't quite understand how it works. Um, hopefully that's pretty useful for you guys. Anyway, so now it's downloaded and extracted. Um, if you can see in our system, emulation station systems, RetroArch, um, everything's been downloaded in here now. Um, so one thing, we'll go into our RetroArch config and then edit with Notepad++ and press Control F and look for thread. I guess it hasn't quite been added yet. We've got to add a cause first. Interesting. So ignore that. Um, yeah, we'll just open right up into RetroArch then. So you can see it's a lot prettier than it was. Um, so very first and foremost, if you're not sure where to go, or what to do with this, um, the help options are actually helpful. Um, if you just press X, um, you can see the basic mineral controls um, and it explains what cores are, loading content, scanning for content, um, and then how to change the um, settings to be more, uh, to be better for 
I guess you can just change it from here. You don't need to worry about the RetroArch config anymore. So yeah, just disregard what we did in the first video. You can actually just do it in the settings here. Um, so yeah, we can just go into uh, settings and then video and threaded mode. Where is it? There we go. And then you press the right arrow and then it'll uh, turn it on. And you can just press Z to go back to the old menu. Okay, so that's good. Um, so now we want to actually add our cores. So we don't have any cores yet. So we're going to go to the online updater. And I'm going to make it full screen. Sorry, it's horrible to look at. Um, okay, so online updater. And then we do our core updater. And then you can see, I like it a lot better now because it actually shows which um, system each core is. So that's really nice. Um, and one thing to note, so I'm just going to start downloading the ones that I have systems for or ROMs for. So you just press X to download them. And it downloads pretty quickly, a lot faster than it did before. Um, so you got to make sure that you've got to wait until it's all done, finished downloading um, before you go into the next one because it doesn't queue the files. Otherwise, it just won't work at all. And so then you don't have any cores, even though you thought you downloaded them. Okay, so I'm just going to go through this list and download a bunch of cores. I said I don't really need to download all of them, but... Uh, yeah, so we'll keep going down and... Maybe really should have a download all button. That would be nice. Um, so... Keep downloading... I can't remember which cause of which, I'm just downloading more. Um, right then. That's the one I think I use. Okay, that's probably pretty good. Um, and then also you can check to see which cause you've got downloaded in your RetroArch folder. Um, under here there's a cause section. So you can see all the ones that just downloaded. So we've got our cores downloaded now. Um, I'll look back to my notes where we're at. So we've got it downloaded, extracted, um, configured. We've got our cores. Um, and then again, you can check which cores you need on the wiki page. Um, another thing you want to note is the BIOS directory. Um, some of the ROMs will need a BIOS in order to work, or the emulators will. So we'll go under settings. Um, directory, and then system BIOS directory. So um, by default, it's in the content directory. So that would be, um, if we go back into our RetroArch thing, it's this directory here. Personally, I like to have a BIOS folder because it just makes more sense to me. So I'm going to grab, all, I already have all my BIOSes in a folder already. Um, so I'm just going to grab that and bring it right on over. And then now, I'm going to navigate to that, so users, Fargus, emulation station, systems, retroarch, then BIOS, and use this directory. So that way, whenever it tries to load emulators that need BIOS, then it'll work. Okay, so one last thing that I think is really important to know, that really, honestly, you might not even need emulation station because of this last thing. Um, unless you want to use things like the GameCube and whatever else. But for the bulk of them, you can actually do them from within here now, which I think is great. Um, so if we go all the way back, you can do add content, and then you do a scan directory, and we're going to navigate to our ROMs directory. So uh, I'm going to actually transfer my ROMs over real quick, just so it has something to scan. Um, so we've got my ROMs here. And then I'm going to go into Emulation Station, ROMs, we're going to paste, and then merge all of them. All right, so we've got all those ROMs. I'm just going to exit out of that, go back into RetroArch. Okay, so I'm going to go into Users, Web Fargus, Emulation Station, and then ROMs. 
So let's say I wanted to scan my Super Nintendo ROMs, so I'll just select this directory and click scan this directory. So I've got eight ROMs in there right now. Um, once it's done scanning, you just press Z a bunch all the way to go back, and then you can see up here on the right, um, this little uh, gamepad, and you can see it's got my eight games, and um, you can select them. So I'll select Clay Fighter, and then it gives me options for uh, which core I want to run it with. So there's like 10 something Super Nintendo cores. Um, so let's say uh, SS9X, uh, you'll select that one, and then you just select it again and start content. And also, it automatically downloads the metadata. Um, so it shows the developer release date, which I think is really cool. So this is similar to Locker if you've ever used Locker. Um, Lacker, or I don't know how they call it. Um, and then you just start content. So there we go. It looks really good. So it's all functioning. And uh, yeah, um, one thing to note, if a core has a problem, um, sometimes it might break things. And so you can't choose another core. Um, just ignore that now. So if it does do that, and you have a broken core, you can easily fix it by going into your emulation station folder or wherever you've downloaded RetroArch. Um, and so we go to Fargus Emulation Station Systems, RetroArch. Um, yeah, so it's under playlists. You can see it created a, let's see if I can, yeah, a .lpl file. And if we open it up in Notepad, it shows all of the emulators and it shows that I set up the SNS9X Libretro core um, on this one. So if it breaks, you can always just swap that back to another core um, if it doesn't open up again or it doesn't give you another option. Um, so just that's one thing to note if it doesn't, because I know I had problems with SNS9X next. So um, just note that. But in the configurations, I tried to choose all the ROMs that actually work. But on occasion, um, because they're nightlies that it scans from, it will. Um, it will break sometimes, so just keep that as notes. So um, now that I've shown you all this RetroArch stuff, emulation station, it, it works. I My computer doesn't really, well, my screen capture doesn't really work um, for it, so and I can open it up, um, but you won't see anything, I don't think. So I'm just going to configure my gamepad real quick, down, left, right. Um, Maybe start select, put it down, put it up. Okay. And then I'm just going to try and open up a ROM and it'll pop up. So I just pulled this one up through Emulation Station and it works the same. So you can really just choose either or now, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, I, I really like the new functionality um, and I find it really useful. And there's a bunch of more options you can modify and mess with, um, but that's the basics to get it started. Um, but yeah, so hopefully that's useful. For, oh, actually, one more thing. Let's see. Go back into RetroArch, and um, there are different menu options that you can do as well. So under Settings, Driver, Menu Driver. So the XMB, that's like the pretty face thing right now. Um, you can go back to the Aragui, which is the black and green that it used to be. Um, but I don't know why you'd want to do that, because the XMB is pretty pretty nice looking. So, um, yeah, that's another thing to note. But yeah, so uh, check it out, test it out yourself, and see how you like it. And, you know, maybe you can just move on from Emulation Station now that they've got this stuff updated. And, of course, it's still in development, so there will be bugs and it will crash sometimes. But um, just exit out back. And